Welcome back. And um, I guess let's just begin with New Jersey, which is one of the hardest hit states. You know, why isn't there more testing and how quickly should we, you know, is May 15th potentially the date to start reopening? I mean, it's very frustrating and especially, you know, our caseload is significant, as you know, and uh, more than 4,000 new cases yesterday. In my district alone, we have more than 17,000 cases and more than 700 people have lost their lives. It's, 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 it's devastating here and testing is essential. Uh, we've made this point um, over and over, you know, we're just trying to ramp, ramp that up. And you know, you're seeing problems nationwide on this and we, it's very difficult and as focused I am is reopening uh, our state and reopening uh, uh, the country. For us, it's hard, it's really challenging without those tests in place. I understand the decision to make it a governor's call about whether to reopen their economies because they're all so different. But when it comes to testing, is that going to end up pitting states against each other for supplies? Well, we have to make sure that doesn't happen. I think that's really a federal charge, the testing and making sure that gets out there. It's why so many of us have been pushing hard on it, working with, of course, so many uh, uh, businesses and, farm, and life science companies like that right in my backyard that's working on testing, and so many are. We have to work together. I think we're best when we work together on that front, and I'm going to keep pushing for that. Each state is different, and, you know, we need to reopen the country, and we have to have a very clear plan. In fact, I've been working on a bipartisan plan as a co-chair of the Problem Solvers Caucus with my colleagues on getting back to business and what that checklist looks like. At the top of that checklist is testing. Right, right. But, again, you know, I hear you saying that there's coordination, but uh, it sounds like they're still the president is pushing the states themselves to kind of come up with this supply. Let me ask you about whether people want to I, I think go ahead. A tough, I think that's a tough thing to put on the states. I think that has to be coordinated. It's one thing if we're making decisions about um, looking at our, our caseloads and taking making sure our people are taken care of in our nursing homes and and our hospitals get what they need in our first responders and our frontline health care workers. That's one piece. And I believe the states have to make those decisions with when we're because when we're ready and ready to open with our businesses, it's another thing to make sure that we're coordinating in our supply chain, right? In our our protective gear, our our face masks, and of course our tests. That that's got to be a coordinated national effort, not pitting each other again and one against each other like we did when in the beginning with the face masks, right? It was exactly. every state of every state fighting for the supply. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no, I take your point. Do people want to get back out there uh, to work uh, out in public, to restaurants again, or are they scared in a, in a region that's as hard hit as yours? I mean, I, I, I think everyone wants to get back to school and back to work, um, and, and people want to, you know, they, they want to get back to their lives. We all do. But I think people are very anxious, especially given, and rightfully so, given the, the daily caseload. We all know so many people who are sick or who, we know people who have lost their lives. So it's, it's a, a, a very hard thing and, and people want to be careful and they want to know what to do, what steps to take and that the tests are there and that they've got the protective gear there. So it's, it, yes, we all want to get out, get out back to our lives, uh, but, but no one wants to put anyone's life in danger. And, and I, I think that's kind of the tough, the tough balance we're facing here. You know, I was shocked to read in the, uh, in the local paper uh, that they're seriously considering whether kids can finish out their spring sports season by starting in late May or having some kind of condensed thing. Now, I know it would avoid a huge administrative headache if they end up saying you can keep your eligibility and maybe come back next year, and that would be its own problem. But you really think, are kids going back to school this school year? Are, are we going to be playing sports? Is there going to be prom? I mean, is any of that realistic? I'm still hoping, and, and you know, I'm not willing to uh, say we're not coming back. I think we, if you ask me today, we're going to get there. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic because... A, and we, we've got to make sure that all the kids have a chance to go to prom and all the, all the end-of-year activities. B, all the kids want to play sports, and I think that's really important. But I, but I, I think we're not going to do it and, and put anyone's, uh, anyone at risk. And I, so I think I'm, I'm not ready to say we should, we should give it up for the school year. Um, we, yesterday, you probably announced, you know, in New Jersey, we announced through the governor that it's going to be uh, May 15th at the earliest. Uh, so I'm, I'm, that's my date that we're shooting for. And, and right now I spent the morning um, doing long division with my kid. <laughs> Would you send him back into school? Today? No. Ever? Uh, this year? May 15th? Maybe. I mean, I, I think you really have to look at these things in, in two-week periods of time. Uh, and I, that's how I'm looking at them. We don't know what we knew two weeks ago very different than today. And, and, and we're seeing the effect in different parts of the country and the curve flattening out. We're seeing that in New Jersey, the caseload, the, because people are, are doing a phenomenal job by staying at home and, and social distancing. We're really seeing that the curve flatten out. So, you know, two weeks from now, it could look very different and we may feel more comfortable. But I think you're going to have to have precautions 
uh, kids having uh, PPE, you know, and and the teachers having face mask, you know, having a uh, mask on to protect themselves. And if we if we can clean well and sanitize well, so and and socially distance properly, there's a lot of things to consider. I know our schools are working on that right now, and so is the governor, and we're all talking to each other. But in the meantime, you know, I still had a call very early this morning from uh, mayor about uh, another nursing home with with 30 plus oh, people. Oh, it's awful. I mean, it's just awful. It's so you know, it's, horrific. It's, it's, Yep. It, it really is. I'm sure you've read about it. It's just horrific. No, it, it really, it, you know, it's a good reminder of what our priorities are as a society and how we're taking care of everybody.